Hey guys, Joe here again. Thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, I wanted to do a split wood fire today, an old fashioned split wood fire, but let's use a Gransfors Brooks outdoor axe and a fire steel, which is in my pocket. We won't use a saw, we won't use a knife, we won't use anything else other than the, the axe and the fire steel. We'll go from the process of cut, selecting the right kind of wood, cutting the tree down, bucking it up, splitting it, making shavings, striking the fire steel on the axe to get the fire going. Let's do that today. Noisy. Okay, so this is a great tree to use. It's a maple, it's got a natural check in it. It's about wrist thick. The one next to it's even better, but it's a little bit big. So you can do a couple things. Really, I could probably pull this down, but let's make a couple chops just to make it easier. And over, after all, I am, I am trying to show you how to do it with an ax, so. You guys probably already know this, but it's a smart idea to move away all the debris and stuff uh, near near where you're going to chop so you don't mess up so you don't trip over it so you don't chop into it and uh, bounce off or anything like that i'm putting the sheath in my pocket always last thing you want to do is lose a brown sheath on the ground it's all brown leaves so uh, just clean it up a bit i want to chop low to the ground i don't really need to use two hands you can if you want to with this small axe but I like to chop in the same direction. I'm not going to be going like this and coming up. It's just not necessary for these small trees. Ah, stop crying. So you see how if I keep chopping the same direction and I move the axe from up to up to the bottom, it's uh, it's still taking out chunks as opposed to a V notch. And it's such a small tree, like I said, that's all you need. Watch out for falling objects and just give it a yank. Move, move, move. And half the time this will happen, it's just gonna break out at the bottom anyway. No big deal. Like I said, I could have pushed it out. Put my ax in my ax pocket. Then I'm good to walk back, carrying my stick. So now next up is bucking it. Um, <clears throat> you can do this a couple ways too, and I'll show you a couple ways that I do it. Again, my sheath is going in my pocket or in my bag or somewhere where I know it is. The first way is you're going to hold it and you're going to actually hit it in midair. It, hit it while it's standing up in the air with your feet away. And then the second way, you're going to lay it on a log and buck it that way. And uh, I'll show you that too. Let me, let's go find a log first because I'm at my camp now where there is a bench and there is a log that I worked at before. But in all honesty, in reality, if you're doing this exercise uh, for real, you're not going to have any of this stuff. So let's go find a suitable log that we can either bring here or do the work at the log uh, to use as a workbench. So I found my log, but before we do that, let's do this standing up way because it works better uh, as a longer pole. So I'm actually going to flip it around because I've got that chopped part at the bottom and I don't want that giving out on me as I'm chopping. So I'm standing my feet back. Uh, I'm swinging right-handed. I need my dog to get out of the way so I don't put an ax in his face. Back. Down. Good. So I'm swinging right-handed, right? My left leg is way back here. My right leg is, pronounced, is, is forward, almost like a bow drill stance. So if I miss, hopefully I'm not hitting anything, right? That's the idea. So can you see there? Yeah. So I just want to make like four cuts at the most. Probably one or two will do this part of it. I'm just going to go on a 45 hard. Okay, that was kind of broken. That doesn't count. Again, hard. Two in the same spot. You're going to turn it. You can turn it on its side and do four all the way around. But I know if I just hit it on this side, it's going to go. So there we go. Three. Leave it. Leave it. Go on, scout. Okay, so this will be the most dense part of the wood. Again, I'll try to do it four hits. Four hits, I mean. One. No, nope, that was kind of bad. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, so you can see how that worked. Now I'm going to buck it up um, on the ground. I might actually have to get a little bit bigger piece because I kind of split up all my wood already. 
we'll see what happens. So this piece of wood here is almost too short to, to buck up, to split, or sorry, to buck up lengthwise, but we'll do it in half just to get my point across. So again, I'm not making a V. I'm not swinging towards myself. Let's go, let's go. Lay down, bud. Down. Good boy. I'm not swinging towards myself, so I'm always gonna swing away. My knees out of the way, my hands are out of the way. And again, I'm hitting it in the same spot, and then I might flip it over. Do it again, and that's that. So there's usually a natural check in the wood, a crack if the wood is seasoned, and I'll, I'll always try to aim for that. I'm going to put my blade right in that crack, I'm going to lift the wood and throw the wood down as opposed to like burying my, as opposed to burying my axe into the wood. That's fine too, but it just takes a little bit different technique. So I'm making sure my hands aren't going to get pinched in the middle by doing this and moving up. A couple hits and then a pry and it's broken, right? Let's try to split this piece the axe way, swinging the axe down on it. It's gone, it just needs a little pry. There we go. Uh, this piece is kind of punky. Oh, I'm so glad he didn't knock my camera over. Next I want to make some shavings, but I need to find something to collect the shavings in because I'm not going to be able to make proper feather sticks with my axe and leave the, the fine feathers on the stick. So let's go find a piece of bark that we can collect our shavings from on. Here's a stump of an old ash tree. The emerald ash borer has wiped out all the ash in my area, but I can definitely use that as a collection device, even just that much. Collect all my shavings right on there. Just gonna put it here on this other side of the log. That way I'm gonna do my shavings, they'll fall right onto the onto the bark. These have to be broken down more anyways. But I like to do my shavings first so that I don't make the pieces too small and they're breaking out and all that stuff. So get some fine ones, collect those, maybe put them in a separate pile than your bigger ones. So that at the end, you don't have to sort through them to try to find your thin ones. Not too bad with an axe. I've got all the shavings I want. It's time to split it down to tender size, kindling size rather, which would be pencil lead, pencil, and thumb size. This stuff is actually chipping out on me. It's not the greatest wood. This maple, it's uh, like in a early stage of decay. So its grain is gone. That's why it's chipping, chipping uh, off on me, but We'll still get it to work. These pieces aren't so bad at all. But then like this, this will chip out. But it'll work. So yeah, all I'm doing, uh, a lot of the times too here, is I'll just line up the the ax right on the, on the wood, down the middle of it. Bring them both down together. Uh, I'm not trying to like hit it. Just bring them down together on, when it's this small. It'll work fine. So I'm all set up. I've got my my small fine stuff here, my uh, shavings and my curls all here. I've got my thicker, coarser curls here. I've got my pencil size here, or my pencil lead, which was supposed to be pencil lead here, pencil, and then thumb and actual fuel here. So we'll get this all going right now. So before I do it, I just want to show a close up of how I'm going to do it. Here's my ax. 
I've got it braced against this log in front. This log is the integral part. I'm gonna put my knee on the ax and I'll pull away with my fire steel right on the blade. I know some people don't like to do that, but it's really no big deal. And I'm gonna shoot a video on field sharpening on how to fix that right after this video. So what I wanna do is look for my finest curl, probably be this one here. Stick some of that in there. And I'm going to just put it right above my ax blade. And again, I'll brace my ax with my knee, pull back. Nice. Okay, so while it's still going, you place it on the, the brace, put your other thicker curls on top. Hopefully you don't smother it. Tools go away. And this back piece will now become part of my fire, this back log, which is no big deal. You want to brace everything up so that there's air underneath it. And as soon as that starts to go, I'll just be laying, oh, actually I got these pieces to go on next. So I'll just be laying them crosswise, crossways, crossing the other ones. Now let that build and we shall have a sustained fire. I feel comfortable putting on big thick pieces like this. It's sustained, it's not going out. Now I can go do whatever I need to do, like dig up a sassafras root for some tea. So there you go, not the most efficient, not the most convenient, but definitely fun and a really good skill to know. So my, looking at my ax, it's no worse for wear off that fire steel. It's a little rusty and stuff, but I am going to shoot that second video right now. I'll probably title it uh, Field Sharpening Tools. And uh, I'll sharpen a Scandinavian grind, convex, a Scandinavian knife, convex knife, and then my convex axe um, all in this video. So, uh, in this video to come. So, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you tune into that video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon on the next one. Goodbye.